so today I'm going to assemble my top and the sequence, my sewing step will be the next one first uh, I'm going to connect front piece to the back piece by stitching one side seam and I'm going to use the serger, my uh, serger, I'm going to use four threads overlock stitch on the side seam next step will be attaching a um, fold over bias binding it's not actually bias, it's just stretchy um, binding and I usually, you know, I bought it on the bolt I have a big bobbin and uh, how I'm going to attach it, I'm just, it's basically if you fold it in half, you can just kind of hug the edge put it on the edge and top stitch so this is my second step my third step will be connecting the second side seam my fifth step will be attaching my stripes my pre-made stripes I really like them because I can adjust the length and my next step will be finishing my hemline and I'm going to use my cover hem stitch uh, using my serger so these are the steps but before I actually move to sewing I wanted to mention one more thing since I'm going to stitch since I'm going to work with a knit fabric which is really stretchable I need to use the correct needles and if you have a home sewing machine you obviously need to use a knit or jersey or stretch it's a jersey or stretch um, type of needles which is which are designed for stretchy stretchable fabric I do have an industrial sewing machine my machine is Zinger industrial 191d slash 30 and I also have um, jersey needles and my I, I, I do have two brands I use both of them I don't remember what brand this one is I just put the package in the trash long time ago so but this one is organ needles organ or organ so the number for my top I do have a double brush poly uh, I like to use number 70 70 I think it's a really good size I believe it's the thinnest one I, at least I you know, I've never seen smaller sizes than 70 so um, I'm going to use these and since I'm going to use this uh, elastic fold over it is always good to replace um, your old needle with a new one I changed my needle just recently I believe I did it last week but since I'm going to um, work with uh, this kind of binding I'd like to replace not so old needle with a new one so that would be my recommendation if you work with this kind of stuff to prevent puckering because this stuff is stretchable it's like a neat um, base and if you look closer you can see small loops on the on you know on the wrong sides so that's why to prevent puckering or skip stitches it's always good to use not just ballpoint but like a new ballpoint needles so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to replace my needle okay the first step is connecting the side seam uh, here is my top okay this is my front let's see let's figure out what is okay the widest part is my front and this is my back so I'm going to unfold it and remember when we cut it when I cut it I create this notch I hope you can see it. There it is. See, this is my notch. And when I connect the front to the back, I need to align those notches. Let me do that here so you can see what I'm doing. Where's my side seam? This is my side seam. Uh, this is my front, and this is my back. There you go. So 
and there's my notch. First, I'm going to line up the notches. some pin. You can use clips. I like to use pins. Okay. So this is the beginning of my single. This is my notch. And then I also have my notches which represent my hemline. So I also want to align them. Let me grab another pin. There we go. So there it is. So this is my side seam. But before we sew, we need to thread our serger. So I do have my Triumph, which I love. I love these machines. So um, and in order to get four thread overlock, stitch. Okay, let me push my pedal. Okay, I'm going to um, thread it. I need to. I need to have four cones, four bobbins. So I'm going to thread my lower looper, my upper looper, my needle O2, and my needle O1. So one, two, three, four. First, as always, we always start with. I mean, I prefer to thread it from the right to the left. So my first thread will be my lower looper, and with Arbor with the triumph with my baby lock triumph it's really easy to do so I need to change uh, I need to put my lever onto the threading I need to lock my tubes and I already put my thread through the um, tension and I want to make sure that my thread is nice and I need to put one inch oh, oops one inch of the thread into the hole okay and then i need to push the air button here we go where's my looper boom uh you can leave this thread just hanging in there i just like to fix it and have it on there so I can see what I'm doing. Oops. <laughs> it's hard to do so because I do have a camera. Just. Okay. So here's my looper. This is my second one. So I need to grab at least one inch and put it into the hole. One, two, three. I want to make sure that I have enough. Sec over there. Here go. This is my second looper. Oops. Good. Okay, now needle O1. Ah, this is my needle O1. Needle one is done. Now the needle number two. And I always I always recommend to use a tweezers or scissors and snip your end, snip the end of the thread so you can get a really clear Okay, I want to make sure that those are not listed. Good. Okay, I'm ready to go. 
So for the settings for the four thread overlock, you you need to have I need to have my wave stitches on A. I want to go back to surging. So my looper is up. I need to have my knife active. So I have my knife is up and it's moving. Okay, and the stitch width. I think I'm good. Seven, and my stitch length is um, two point two point five and like three. Okay, I think I'm good. So let's do it then. So I do have my side seam, my notches right there. I still have my pin in there. See, like my two hands holding the beginning of the seam. And notches. I'm gonna line it up correctly. Okay. I like it. See, it's beautiful stitch. I like my Triumph. It's such a helper. And I always check the quality of the stitch. So what you need to see, you don't need to see any stitches when you look at the right sides, at the right side of your garment. So that's mean the quality of the stitches really good. Okay. Okay. I like it. Okay, okay, so let's move to the bias. Okay, talking. So I decided to change uh, my sewing steps. I try to play with um, this fold over with this binding, and I just couldn't get a really good corner. Um, I run some testing uh, on the scrap fabric. And what I mean saying that by saying that I couldn't get um, my idea was to apply this binding just all the way over the top of my top, top part of my top, top edge of my top, and I couldn't um, get a really good corner because you need to fold it over and then you need to fold over this corner as well and you know I just couldn't get a really nice um, finish corner finish on both sides so that's why I decided to change my steps and um, I connected my second side seam so as you can see both my side seams are connected so this is my left one and this is my right one so and now I want to apply my binding and the way that I'm going to do so I'm going to attach it to my okay here we go I'm going to attach it to my center I mean to the front center and to the back center and then and then I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to attach it to my armhole, okay, to these pieces. So this way I will have nicely finished corner. Okay, I'm going to show you how I do that. Just bear with me. Okay, this is my, let me see, where is my front and where is my back? My front is a little bit wider than my back. Okay, yes, I found it. So this is my front. Here it is. So this is my front center. Let's see, I need to see if you see that. Okay, so this area. So I'm going to attach my binding just over this area. And to do so, I want to find the wrong side of my binding. 
and see it has a natural curve so that's why I really want to place it just like so but what I wanted to do I wanted to get some gathering over there or maybe like here and there because I, I plan on that I I wanted to have some kind of like a dirt but it's not going to be real dirt it's going to be just kind of a little bit gathering over there since this body is stretchable so that's what I'm going to use um, this feature I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and once I attach it it's going to gather my neckline a little bit so first I put my binding with the wrong side up and I'm going to put my neckline on the top and what I want to do I wanted to attach the top to one of my sides one of the fold over sides and I'm going to stretch I'm going to stretch my fold over a little bit okay and remember we're going to stretch our fold over a little bit but we and kind of push our top a little bit so we'll get those nice gathering at the end <laughs> and what I'm basically doing I aligning the edge of my top with the center of my binding to cut this piece and I want to show you how it happens see I hope you can see this gathering and um, to uh, you can play with that you can get this gathering just on these segments but you know that's what actually what I've done I do have definitely less gathering in the middle um, but you can do whatever you want you can get even more gathering if you want to okay so I attached my uh, wrong sides of my fold over and now I want to fold it in a half and it's really easy to do because it has um, it has like a line in the middle so it's really easy to find this line and it's actually folds in half by itself okay that's it you got really nicely finished edge see how nice it is what I need to do I need to clip this piece and what you can do you can go um, and press it with the iron a little bit but I'm going to do it after I finished all sizes okay so this is my first piece now I need to do the same with my back neckline and I'm going to speed up this process a little bit so you don't get bothered Well, I finished my front center uh, neckline and my back center neckline, so now I'm moving on to finishing my armhole. I already pinned my seam allowance toward the back because I just like to keep my uh, seam allowance, you know, organized. So that's why I like to press them toward the back. So, and I also clip the edges of my binding flash and what I need to do I need to attach my fold over to my armholes same strategy but right now 
I wanted to leave some um, a little bit of I would say like one inch maybe a little bit more like a, almost like two inches of my binding on the side I will explain why we need to do so but steps are the same so stitch on one side only and I'm I'm not going to gather this time a lot maybe just a little bit because I don't like to achieve the opposite results I don't like to overstretch my armholes see I do gather but not that much as on my front pieces okay removing the pin so this way I know that this is my back Okay. Stretching it. once again, not that much. Once again, we need to leave a little bit of the edge, like so. Why we need to have this distance? Because once we attach the second piece, the second part of our binding, let me, I'll show you what I mean. What I do. Oh, actually, let's cut off these tails. So see, I need to trim my seam allowance a little bit and I wanted to get rid of those tails because I wanted to have it flush and nice. Okay. Now see how easy it is to use this fold over. And the result Actually, the finished result looks you know, really well. You know, it looks professionally finished. Okay, same situation. So there, just a little bit because I want it to be able to fold it nicely. Good. Now, what I want to do, I want to cut it. Okay, how much is this? It's like one centimeter, so a little bit more. Uh, and then the inch, I would say like a half inch, right? Yeah, half inch. Okay, and what I want to do, I want to fold it. Let me get rid of this. Threads. What is that? Okay, one more. Okay. And what I want to do, I want to fold it like so. So see, if I do this way, I will get really, oops, sorry, I will get really nice and, um, you know, nicely looking corner. And after I finish this corner, I will attach, where's my stripes over there? I will attach my stripes just like so. So I'm going to finish this one and I'm going to attach my stripes like so by top stitching it over there. And I want to follow this line, the line of my binding to top stitch of the second side. I'm just doing like a back tap, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, looks good. And I really like the sharp corner. I wanted to get rid of these tails. 
And what I want to do, I want to clip the edge of the binding. I still have this little... There we go. Okay. See? Now I have a really nice corner, which is not possible to do with one long piece of the binding. So, and let me show you how would I attach my stripe. I want to make sure that this is the right side. Okay, here we go. This is the right side. And I wanted to fold it. I'm touching my camera, so I'm sorry. It's going to be like so. And actually, what we can do, we can actually attach it this way first. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. Let me get. And since I have a really nice and sharp ball pointed needle, you know, see, I have really nicely finished stitch on the right side of my binding. And, okay, I can fold it over. I want to make sure it's the right side. Yep. Okay, fold it over. And now I'm going to attach this corner. I'm going to top stitch this corner. It's a little bit tricky there because the thickness. But I think if I grab my tails, what I usually do, I grab two threads and hold them. So this way I can control my stitches. Like so. Let me clip the threads. Be careful, do not clip your top. Or your strap. Okay. There you go. Please, let me unfold it. Okay, this is how it looks like. Okay. This is my strap, which I really like. Because sometimes, you know, when you use a different bra, you have to readjust the length of your straps. So that's why I really like these options when it's, uh, you know, adjustable. Okay, so I'm going to finish my other corners. And then I will show you how I finish my hem. So I'm just going to repeat the same steps with all four corners. Oh, well, well, well. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I decided to put two of these stripes. Uh, since my bias width is wider than my the width of one stripe, I decided what if what if I add a second one? So this way I will not only match the width of my bias, but of my binding, but also will get more you know stable stripe. My bra cup size is triple D or E, uh, which means two stripes will be better than one so that's what I've done uh, how I did that just the same way as I did with my first one I attached uh, the bottom of the stripe to the bottom of the corner and then I'm going to top stitch toward the edge of my binding so this way I will attach my second one to the binding so let's do it I will show you how I doing so so the trick is to keep two stripes together. So what you can do, you can just, you know, you can pin it or you can use any type of clip. So holds them together. And now I wanted to place my binding under the presser foot. And the trick is to stay on the edge to create a nicely looking top stitch. And I'm going to finish just right at the corner. 
Okay, double check. Okay, I like it. Okay, it's kind of going outside, but no, it looks good. I really like it. So let's clip those tails. So that's why it's really important to have a really nice needle because you're going to top stitch a lot over the fold over binding. This one I clean those tails. Okay, let's see how it looks like. Okay. See? I do have a little gap. It's like a one millimeter, but you know, I like it. So I'm going to keep it like so. I don't like to put them really like close to each other. What I need to do, I need to match the same gap on my second corner. Mm -hmm. like it. Let's finish the other corners as well. To finish our hemline. I assemble my side seams, I attach it my binding, I attach my stripes, so I'm ready to finish my hemline. Before I actually search my hemline, I like to actually let me grab another one, the black one. I like to uh, use my hemline using the fusible interfacing uh, and I also like to use this pad so I can slide it under and let me judge okay. and remember we have marked our hemline with the notches and if I look closer I can see my notch still even if I even um, under my serger thread I can see that so my hem line is going to be that wide and what I want to do I want to achieve that curve so that's why I like to fuse it or glue it together And I do have a white one, and it actually gives me like a guide how wide should be my hemline. So I, I can see my marks, my notch, and I'm going to place the edge of my fusible interfacing, my web, there. Okay. I mean, you can mark, you can use your ruler to achieve the correct placement but I'm kind of eyeballing okay, and I'm going to fold it over and see how curve how curvy my hemline that's why I want to fuse it before because if I just go and stitch I will stretch it but I don't like it. I like it still it. Just between okay, the 
the steam off and then you just need to hold and press it for 10 seconds four, five, six, seven. Since I already have my iron on, I wanted to press my top part. Remember how we gather our neckline? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it under. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I want to lightly press it so this way I can Get my gather quest. Okay, so let me put away the iron and we're ready to do our cover hem stitch. Let's move. To the server. It is really easy to switch from our lock to the cover hem if you have a baby lock triumph serger. I'm just going to show you how quickly it is. So what I need to do, I need to cut my threads completely. So let's cut it over there. Okay. Lift your presser foot up. Take your threads out. Okay, let me put mine. Okay. I'm going to take my threads. Okay, now, since we move into the cover stitch, I need to replace my needles. First, what I need to do, I'm going to put my presser foot down. Okay, first needle out and I wanted to have a wide oh actually let's do the narrow one okay C2 and then I'm going to replace my first needle I'm going to place it into C3 position okay and let me open the Okay, first down and then up. There you go. Okay, tie this through completely so the needle O2 is going to be a little bit lower than the needle one. Okay, now let's put the cones. So I'm going to have a needle two. I'm going to have a needle three. Okay. Then I need to replace my lower looper with my chain looper. There. So let's retread it. Okay, the hook first, second hook, third, boom. And just to confirm it, let's grab the guide. Okay. 
three thread flat lock no it's not that not flat lock we need to have just a cover hem where is our cover hem chain stitch there you go cover stitch cover stitch so my needles is c2 and c3 so i'm going to have my c2 c3 and my chain looper right and to do so we need to get the upper looper selection down i'm going to put it down and i need to turn my hand wheel to lock it down okay it's locked now we're going to have okay sewing table i'm going to replace my table with my cover hand okay i'll do it later let's change the positions okay chain needle tension four and six that's what i have i have it at five uh chain looper tension is one or two i do have it at two o'clock two <laughs> two o'clock okay so i think that's it let's thread it once again in order to thread it i need to lock my tubes okay and this is my chain looper have enough thread okay one inch inside push the threads and let's add one more and where is it it's right there okay let's thread it now needle one Um, the air trailer but I just don't like it. I don't know, it's just easy for me to use a regular so let's use the tweezers. It's much easier now. I just like to use the tweezers. Okay. First needle and the second needle. Okay, got it. Hmm. You know what I've done? I've noticed that my first one didn't thread it correctly. So because I'm, I'm going to use my second and third one and I thread my first one which is not right. So let's retread it. One, two, boom. Let's grab the end. Yeah, because you need to be really careful when you're treading. If I use my second and third one, my tension plates will be activated. So, um, and if I treaded the wrong slot, which was the first one, um, my tension wouldn't be precise so that's why i change it so please be careful when you're treading you need to pay attention what you're doing okay there you go that's it <laughs> you tread it okay now i just need to grab my sewing table my cover hem table let's do it Okay, there is my table. Okay. And it's really easy to snap it on. One. And what we need to do as well, we need to designate our knife. So I need to put my, I need to lock my knife. And it's easy to do so. I just need to turn the lever. Okay, good. Okay, surging. Okay, and how wide I want to be stitched. So this is my hemline, like so. Let's measure. Okay, let's measure it. So my hemline is that end. My hem seam allowance is okay. 
one one inch and two eighths or one fourth one and one fourth so that's why my stitches has to be placed on the seam allowance, not off. So that's why I need to have my left needle be positioned less than one inch and one four. So see, this is my hem. So that's why I wanted to have my stitches be a little bit inside, like so. So what I wanna do, maybe like one inch. And my left needle marks is right there. So this is where my placement my needle placement is so I just try to line it up like so okay I'm going to place my needle down okay press her foot down and what you can do if you want you can mark you can place um let's do it on you can place I do have this scotch tape white and yellow one what we can do we can place so this. we can place our scotch tape like so which becomes a guideline let's do it I'm just trying to make it straight. So this is your guideline. Okay, I hope you see that. Let me you know, close the light. So this is my guideline. So see, I'm just lining up the edge of my fold with the um, edge of my guide. <laughs> it's guide. Okay, let's do it. to jump over the seam. I always slow down when I go over the seam and see how beautiful it is. Okay, you can see, let me switch a little bit farther. Okay, good. See? See, no skip stitches, no puckering, nothing. Just even stitches. I really like this machine. This machine is really good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how I finish my color cut stitch. And what I need to do, remember, my left needle was... Um, the placement of the left needle is these marks. So that's what I need. I need to line up this mark with my left stitch line. Okay. And what I want to do, you know, I want to cut it. This, this is how I usually do. You can leave it and let them tie it on, but I don't like it. Okay, now I'm watching my marks. And I try to line it up. And since I, okay, here it is. This is my marking. And this is my marks and this is my left uh, stitch line so and it's it's really easy when you have a clear foot on it because you can manage I mean it's kind of hard for me to see from this angle I usually lean closer but I have my camera so but let's see yeah okay I think I got it okay I decided to show you another top that I've made just recently uh, and I've used the same fold over binding that I use for my leopard top but uh, instead of using the pre-made stripe I've used the same binding let's take a look see look at this stripe this is how it looks like it's stretchy but in order to do so you need to be you need to know exact measurement how long your stripe should be 
from corner to the corner and I know for my pattern it's like 20 27 centimeters um, yours might be different it's obvious and to make the top looks like so the sequence the sewing step will be the next ones so you need to uh, finish side seams as well both of them I finish the v-neck then I did my back piece then I placed my stripe and armhole okay and then see the armhole and stripe same so first second third and fourth but once again you need to be really careful with the length you need to make sure that you get this distance correctly otherwise your top will be either too low or too high and I haven't finished um, my cover hem on this one so I'm just going to show you uh, on the camera how I do that since I already have my black thread on uh, the serger so let's do it and I'm going to just show you how I finish because I didn't show you um, with my red top okay uh, once again uh, this is my hemline and let me grab my measuring tape it's it is one inch and one eighth so if I once again I need to find my side seam because that's where I want to start and finish okay there is my side seam okay. once again I want to I want to catch the seam allowance on my hemline Okay, so this is why my left needle should be catching the bottom layer. Okay, let's find that position. If I go like so, oh, it's too white. Okay, let's see, I'm just, no, it's too white too. I think it's going to look quite the same that we did on the red one. Yeah, I like it. So see, I'm going to use the same guide. My scotch guide. I'm going to use the same one. See, I have my yellow piece still on. Okay, let's do it. Now I try to align my mark with my left thread. Okay, let me see. Slow down at this point. I just want to add a little bit. Oh, look, so. It's kind of hard to see it from this point. <laughs> yeah, but I think I managed that. Okay, so now we're going to finish. So I overlap my stitches like one inch. Okay, now I want to grab some thread. I want to pull it. Then I, I run my screwdriver under the needles. I grab it. Okay, then I'm going to clip them. And then just going to pull it like so. And if you do this way, you not you not only get a really nicely finished cover hem stitch, but also you will get all your threads. Where's my threads? Over there. All your threads on your left side. What you need to do? You need to click the last one. It's it is really easy. So you don't need to, you know, fight your fabric or fight your stitch to get those uh, this tail under. What I want to do? I want to clip this. And this is my threads, right? Once again, how are we going to finish our seam? I'm taking my needle with my with a big eye. 
I'm going to stick it under the stitches, put it through, now, now I need to clip my threads so they are even, it's just easier to put it through the eye, this is a really big eye, okay, like so, and then I push my needle, pull it, that is, all my tails are hidden under the stitches. That's it. See? And I've got really just perfect finish. And this is my overlap. So I overlap my stitches like one inch. That's it. There it is. I have another top. So with my black pants, these going to be two new sets. I really like this top. It's a little bit sheer, a little bit you know, translucent, but um, with the black bra, I think it doesn't make such a big difference. I mean, it doesn't um, it doesn't look really bad, so it's not going to be like really really sheer. Um, I bought this fabric at Joann just in case. I, I think they still have it. Actually, I have another piece, and I might. Well, I'm, I maybe make uh, a skirt, so it's going to be like a really nice summer set for, you know, kind of, you know, getting, going out. And, you know, you can use like a little uh, jacket on the top uh, for cooler days or uh, wear it with the jeans, with the black jeans or with just the blue jeans, with the light blue or dark blue. It just, I think it goes with everything. Okay, so there is my two animals. Okay, let me, oh, let me move this one so you can see. See, I do have two animal prints tops right now. Blue and red. Thank you for watching. Let's move to the next project.